Donald Trump unexpectedly speaking at a campaign donors event at Union Station here in Washington. Possibly the last time we will hear from him as a private citizen. Tomorrow, he becomes the president at noon. What can we expect? We're joined now by Fox News Chief National Correspondent Ed Henry. Tucker, we have can now confirm tonight, Fox News, that Donald Trump is not going to change a bit. <laughs> yes, I mean, basically, all of this hand wringing, is he going to have to get more presidential? Is he going to have to change? No. He gets up there and says, I outworked everyone. Yes. Kellyanne, come up here. Watch your step, baby. Uh, you know, he doesn't care. The words he uses, the language, uh, how he's presenting it, uh, talking about, you know, the name dropping. I just got off the phone with Tom Brady. Belichick's a great coach. There's Bob Kraft, the owner of the Patriots. <laughs> uh, Steve Wynn is in the crowd. Oh, by the way, this is a, an event for campaign donors, and you're supposed to kiss their butt at a time like this. But he starts out by saying, you know, some of you guys, you didn't open up the checkbooks <laughs> until after I won. I got the call from you the day after. I couldn't use the call a week earlier. And he is not going to change a bit. But the line of the night, it may rain tomorrow. Who knows? But if it does, <laughs> you'll know my hair is real. <laughs> and he's just going to throw that out there. And when you talk about how all this is going to play out, think about it. About 930 in the morning, where is he going to be? He's going to go across the street from Blair House, where dignitaries stay, with the incoming first lady, Melania Trump, and go have a cup of tea with Barack and Michelle Obama, someone who... He was all over for years, fought with bitterly. But now, despite all of the attacks back and forth on Twitter with Chuck Schumer and other Democrats, Hillary Clinton, and the Russians did it, and Comey did it, and John Lewis, Barack Obama and Donald Trump have actually forged a kind of an interesting, if not a friendship, maybe a partnership where they both complimented. They, they've had sharp words. Let's not gloss over that. But they have tried very hard to put all the rest of the noise aside and make this a peaceful transition of power despite all the noise out there. And so, oh, to be a fly on the wall for that cup of tea yes. between the Obamas and the Trumps. And then, of course, they take the limo ride over. 11 a.m., they should be at the Capitol by then for the swearing in by noon Eastern time. Uh, and remember uh, that you're going to have uh, not just Bush 43, because uh, unfortunately Bush 41 is in the hospital and getting better we all hope and pray. Um, but you're going to have Bill and Hillary Clinton there. Yes. Watching Donald Trump being sworn into office and delivering this inaugural address. A rejection of the legacy, I think it's fair to say, of Barack Obama. But you can also say about Trump that he is almost exactly the same in person when the cameras are off as he is when you see him on television. You can't say that about any other politician I've been around, whether you like it or not. But because when he exactly meets with the Obamas, he's going to be the guy you just saw. That you just saw and in front of the campaign donors, the same guy. I was over at the Trump Hotel a little earlier to get some color. And Bob Kraft, who we threw out there, the owner of the Patriots, he's staying there. He's glad handing with people. And then I ran into basically half of the Trump cabinet walking through the lobby of the Trump International Hotel. It's almost like the shadow White House down the street as they wait for the Obamas to move out. I mean, Mnuchin, you know, the, the possible Treasury Secretary, still got to get through the hearings. Yes. Um, you had Gary Cohn, the former COO of Goldman Sachs, who's going to run the National Economic Council, uh, walking through Michael Cohn, uh, no relation, who's the chief attorney uh, for Donald Trump. So he's got this sort of shadow cabinet that's already up and running at the hotel three, four blocks from the White House. And by the way, Jared Kushner, 35 years old, you yes. mentioned while we were listening to that. Did a phenomenal job in the campaign, believing in his father-in-law, using Facebook and other untraditional methods. When everyone was laughing at Donald Trump, yes. he said, you can't get to 270. You're not raising enough money. You're not running enough TV ads. And it was Jared Kushner who calmly, coolly believed. And now his reward is his father-in-law says, I think you can get Mitty's piece. No one else has been able to do that. <laughs> but you know what? I think you could do that. And I'm really hoping, and we're all counting on you. So good luck, Jared. You know, it's a, it's a tall order, of course, and it's failed, you know, for more than half a century. Democrats, Republicans. But I have to say, Kushner's real achievement may be thinking for himself. I mean, he comes from a world where I bet not a single person supported Donald Trump. He's, he's from New York. He's from one of the famous real estate families of New Jersey and New York City. Yeah. He's kind a of a liberal elite world. Very much a liberal elite world. Went to Harvard. Again, he doesn't have peers who share his views. Absolutely. And he took a lot of heat for that throughout the entire campaign. Really, you're supporting your father-in-law? He's the opposite of everyone in our world, and he did it anyway. And he's Jewish, and he had all of these critics of Donald Trump That's say right. your father-in-law is anti-Semitic. 
his tweets, his this, his that, and yet the son-in-law stood by him every step of the way, has been very loyal, and has been a remarkable lieutenant for him. And now, it, you know, is giving up all these assets and going That's into right. blind trust to actually work in the White House, not to be the troubleshooter, the power player on the outside like most people do. He's actually going in and saying, I'm going to roll up my sleeves That's exactly and we're going right. to try to do this. That's, right. That's fascinating how that plays out. You think you're tough? Here's a toughness test. Buck the views of everyone in your social circle. Yeah. Disagree with everyone you have dinner with on a regular basis and see how that works out. You Most people it. will not do that. And Henry, that was great. Good Thanks. to see you.